Hey, so today is gonna be kind of a crash course in the types of mortgage loans that exist. So you're getting ready to buy a home and you need to apply for a loan. This is always good to know the types that exist, their pros and their cons, and which ones you could be eligible for. So my name is Glenise Johnson with Artform Homes and EXP Realty, and I am an agent in the Greater Birmingham, Alabama area. Um, kind of serving all over, you know, Pelham, Helena, Town, Fultondale, Gardendale, uh, Irondale, Center Point, all those areas. Um, and so a few things before we get started on the types of loans that exist. Um, I do want to uh, explain that since I kind of did a little bit of research on this to kind of gather my notes and everything, this is a lot of information. So I'm going to break this up into two parts. So part one, we're going to kind of talk about um, your general conventional loan, the difference between conforming and non-conforming, um, and then I'm going to get into like the most common federally insured loan, which is usually it's FHA. Um, you may have heard that if you've heard of any type of loan, if you're familiar with loans, that's probably one of the ones you're familiar with. And then part two, next week i want to talk about the two federal loans that you don't have to pay a down payment for um as well as a brief little dis uh explanation of the difference between a fixed and adjustable mortgage rate so part one today part two next week also i want to um i want to say before we get started is that if you're watching this today because i'm shooting these like a little bit in advance of course but if you're watching this the day that i'm posting it today is technically my son's due date um he's supposed to be here today but more than likely we don't pay attention to due dates he's probably not um so i would hope that he's here and i'm somewhere laid up with him but if not we still waiting on him to arrive but anywho happy due date to me and to my son super excited for that but let's get into uh these loans so non-conforming and conforming loans so a conforming loan is one that's going to still even though it's not government insured it's going to be it's kind of falling into the lines the the in the requirements for those government enterprises so the example of that would be a conventional loan if you've heard of loans if you've heard of fha you may have heard of also of a conventional loan this is usually like i said it's not backed by government um it's not backed by the government um, but it is um it's typically a lower borrowing cost even if the interest rates could be a little bit higher you can pay as little as three percent however if you pay anything under 20 percent, you will be required to pay what's called private mortgage insurance now the beauty of that with this conventional loan is once you get to 20 percent equity in your home you can do away with that insurance 20 percent equity you can get rid of it that's a great perk um so your FICO score needs to be about at least 620 and i want to pause and make a disclaimer about this um as of recently within the last year um of course covid has kind of made these uh credit score requirements kind of fluctuate a little bit so i would say definitely check 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 with a lender to confirm these numbers have definitely fluctuated so they could be a little bit higher could be a little bit lower um, but definitely check with the lender um so your debt to income ratio needs to be about 45 percent um if you've watched the video i posted last week about what mortgage lenders look for on your credit report i said your debt to income ratio most of the programs are going to be in the 40s 41 43 45 so i said I always strive to get at least 40 that way you just cover all of them so again this example is about 45 percent um so for this type of loan this is usually for people who have a really really stable income a really good credit score you've got a lot of money to put down this is usually you're gonna um, more than likely be able to qualify for this but again of course your everyone's financial situation is unique so definitely check with a lender so that's an example of a conforming loan because even though it's not backed by the government it does fall in line with a lot of the you know requirements and the stipulations that would be you know needed so an example of a non-conforming loan is what's called a jumbo loan so i'm gonna go ahead and say off the bat this is more so for your more affluent buyer you got a lot of money <laughs> you're getting a higher price point of a home um so for jumbo loans the int the limits are much larger um the interest rates are actually really really competitive you need a credit score of about 700 700 now again check with a lender but that's already it's pretty high that for me for me this high so uh, with that you also need to be able to put at least 10 to 20 percent down no threes with this at least 10 to 20 percent down um and your debt to income ratio still needs to be about 45 percent 
but there's gonna be a little bit more in-depth documentation with this one, including required assets of at least 10% of the loan. So again, this is for affluent buyers in a much, much higher price point. So again, this, if this applies to you, absolutely, this is a benefit because you get those really competitive interest rates. Um, but you know, just saying, most of us don't fall into that category, but if you do, this is definitely something to look into because you could be eligible for it. It's a great benefit for you. So I'm going to touch on what's the most common government insured loan, which is usually an FHA loan. That's what most of us are going to, you know, we're a little bit lower income, we don't necessarily have money to blow on the down payment or even the closing costs. Um, FHA is usually what we fall under as far as eligibility. When my husband and I bought this home, it was an FHA loan. So the minimum credit score, and again, this could have changed. Uh, last time I checked, it was about 580, but I think because of COVID, it kind of went up a little bit. Um, so definitely, again, check with the lender to make sure that number's correct for you. Um, you'll need about 3.5%. I know that for sure for the down payment. Um, and if you're able to put down at least 10% with your down payment, you could get away with the lower credit score. You could. If you're able to put up to 10% on the loan, um, you could get away with that. Um, so you have to pay two mortgage insurance premiums. Um, one's paid up front and the other's paid annually and for the life of the loan. So it's not like with conventional where after you get 20% in uh, equity, you can kind of do away with it. You have to pay this insurance for the life of the entire loan. And so with this one, your, de your debt to income ratio is about 43%. Again, they're in the 40s. So if you can try to get your DTI to about 40%, you're able to be at least across the board somewhat eligible for more loan for more loan programs at a time. Um, so again, I think I mentioned, I mentioned it earlier. If you're interested, I have a link to the video that I posted last week when I talked about what mortgage lenders are actually looking for in your credit report. Again, these are just general information Information. Of course, definitely check with a lender to see what your financial situation is and how these particular loans can apply to you. So I just talked about a little bit about the you know FHA loan versus the conventional loan. Um, next week, I'm going to talk about those federal federally insured loans that don't require a down payment, um, and I'll finish up with you know fixed rates and adjustable mortgage rates. So that's all I have for today. Um, definitely check out last week's video and then stay tuned for part two where I finish up on these types of mortgage loans. So much love, take care, and I will talk to you later.